electrochemistry one of the important door die topics for the neat and jee what it takes to understand electrochemistry more effectively what is oxidizing agent what is reducing agent what is oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen hydrogen and electron how to remember these concepts without any confusion for long time by using super tricks so what are the electrolytes and types of the electrolytes what is the sign of the cathode and anode in the electrochemistry part 1 and part 2 how to avoid the confusion so all these things will be discussed in this video hello students i am your sangmesh sir and you are watching effortless chemistry today i am going to start a fresh topic that is electrochemistry which is one of the important topic if you are new to my channel please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get notification for all the videos if you have any doubts let me know in the comment box and check the description box for important playlist tricks and shortcuts and your love and support keeps me motivated to make more videos for you that's why don't forget to like the video let's get started so this electrochemistry it is the branch of chemistry which deals with interconversion of electrical energy into chemical energy and chemical energy into electrical energy so i'll split this heading into two parts that is electrochemistry 1 and electrochemistry 2 here in the electrochemistry 1 we will discuss the conversion of electrical energy into chemical energy in the electrochemistry 2 we'll discuss conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy here so electrochemistry 1 it deals with what the conversion of electrical energy into chemical energy the device or the cell which converts electrical energy into the chemical energy is called as what electrolytic cell here in this one by using some amount of current we will bring about some chemical changes so that electrical energy is converted into chemical energy here that is electrochemistry part 1 it is next in the electrochemistry 2 we will discuss conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy so the device or the cell which converts chemical energy into electrical energy that is called as galvanic cell or voltaic cell here in this process the energy released during the spontaneous redox reaction that is utilized to convert into electrical energy so what is a spontaneous process here i said that spontaneous redox reaction what is spontaneous process the process which proceeds with the decrease in the energy is called as what spontaneous process so all the redox reactions are spontaneous processes spontaneous reactions during which some amount of energy is released that amount of energy released that is utilized to convert into electrical energy that's what the energy released that is we call it as gibbs free energy the free energy that is released during the spontaneous redox reaction that is utilized to convert into chemical energy the cell that converts chemical energy into electrical energy is called as what galvanic or voltaic cell here so before starting these two process we should know some basics about a redox reaction what is oxidizing and reducing agent some basics we will discuss very very simple tricks are there to know these things here first one oxidation oxidation can be defined in three ways that is addition of oxygen removal of hydrogen and removal of electron reduction is removal of oxygen addition of hydrogen and addition of electron exactly these two are opposite here these two definition that is we use in organic and this is inorganic in terms of uh, electrons loss of electron and gain of electron in terms of uh, that is inorganic chemistry here now in this one loss of electron is what oxidation leo zer you have to remember this one these are important tricks to remember leo zer that is nothing but loss of electron is oxidation and gain of electron is what reduction here the species which is undergoing oxidation it acts as reducing agent and the species which is undergoing reduction it is acting as oxidizing agent here always you keep in mind the species which undergo oxidation acts as reducing agent the species which undergo reduction that is acting as what oxidizing agent and in case of oxidation process oxidation state increases and in the reduction process what happens oxidation state decreases this one you keep in mind here for example if i take an oxidation of uh, sodium metal sodium metal this uh, by losing an electron it will be converted into what na plus here okay here the oxidation state of sodium is 0 0 to plus 1 oxidation state is increased loss of electron is what oxidation here sodium loses one electron now if i take chlorine cl minus is there this by gaining an electron it will be converted into cl this cl 
it can be written as what half cl2 because it must be written in the molecular form so i have written as half cl2 here so gain of electron is reduction this is oxidation next one if i combine these two process where the oxidation and reduction they will takes place at the same time that is called as what redox reactions this is the example for redox reaction here the reaction in which both oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously that is called as what redox reaction you see here this na plus is there na plus it gains an electron to convert into what sodium metal here oxidation state will be zero and here cl minus is there it loses an electron to convert it into what cl two times of cl minus is there it, it can be written as what cl2 minus 1 to 0 is oxidation plus 1 to 0 is what reduction so this is the reduction and this is oxidation both takes place at simultaneously so this is called as what redox reaction now you see here this species which is undergoing oxidation it is acting as reducing agent now this species which is undergoing reduction it is acting as what oxidizing agent here okay these are the simple tricks and very very basic things and these are most important to understand the complete electrochemistry topic okay you have to remember all these tricks next one always remember that uh, avocar it is avocar anode oxidation cathode reduction at anode oxidation takes place always and at cathode always reduction takes place here and another point is you have to remember the sign of uh, anode and cathode in the electrochemistry one the sign of anode and cathode is anode will be positive and cathode will be negative okay in the electrochemistry two anode will be negative and cathode will be positive only sign will change always you keep in mind at the anode oxidation takes place at cathode reduction takes place only there is a change in the sign because these two are exactly opposite process in the electrochemistry one we are converting electrical energy into chemical energy in the electrochemistry two we are converting what chemical energy into electrical energy that's why these two are being exactly opposite process their only sign will change but the process is same anode oxidation cathode reduction these signs you have to remember in the electrochemistry one anode is positive cathode is negative electrochemistry two anode is negative cathode will be positive this is very very important trick you should not ignore it so this is very very important trick this is very helpful to avoid the confusion next one what are the conductors which allows electric current to pass through it there are two types of conductors and mainly that is metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors in case of metallic conductors they conducts electricity due to the migration of electrons here the electrical conductivity is due to the migration of electrons so that the metals which are having free electrons they are acting as what metallic conductor example will be metals here okay here the electrical conductivity will be due to the migration of free electrons another type is there that is electrolytic conductor or else we call it as ionic conductor here they conducts electricity due to the migration of ions here the conduction of electricity is due to the migration of ions in the aqueous medium example is nothing but electrolytes here these electrolytes are nothing but whenever they are dissolved in water they will split into positive and negative ions and they are free to move whenever you supply electrical current due to the migration of these na plus and cl minus ion there is a conduction of electricity here so this is the conductors metallic conductor and electrolytic conductor next we'll go for what are electrolytes and how many types of electrolytes are there here so the next important point is what are electrolytes the substances which dissociates into its ions in the aqueous medium or in the molten state are called as what electrolytes means whenever a substance is added to the water if it split into its cation and anion that substance is called as what electrolyte here for example if i take a kcl this kcl is added to the water if it is added to water this kcl it will split into k plus ion and cl minus ion and these are called as what electrolytes here and again here these electrolytes they are again classified into three types strong electrolytes weak electrolytes and non electrolytes here strong electrolytes ionizes completely at the moderate concentration means whenever that electrolyte is added to the water 
it will ionize completely 100% ionization takes place for example here if i take 10 molecules of nacl whenever they are added to the water all the 10 molecules they will split into na plus ion cl minus so that 10 nacl is added 10 na plus ion and 10 cl minus ion will be produced here so this is called as what 100% ionization for the strong electrolytes the degree of dissociation value alpha will be is equal to 1 here Similarly, if you go for weak electrolytes, these ionizes partially at the moderate concentration. Means here 100% ionization will not take place. They will ionize only uh, to the some extent here. For example, if I take this acetic acid, whenever it is added to the water, okay, assume that it is added to water here. Then what happens here? It will split into anion and cation. But here, if I take 10 molecules of CH3COOH, all the 10 molecules will not split here. Only 4 will be splitting or 3 may be splitting. So that 100% ionization will not take place here. Here I have written an example. 10 molecules of CH3COOH is taken. Only 4 molecules are splitting into anion and cation here. Remaining 6 CH3COOH molecules, they are in the undissociated form. They are not forming any ions here. That's why we call it as the ionization is not 100% here. So, the alpha value is not equal to 1. If it is 100%, then only we can write what? Alpha is equal to 1 here. So, here the degree of dissociation for weak electrolyte is less than 1, but it is greater than 0 it is because they are undergoing dissociation to small extent here. If you go for non-electrolytes, they do not ionize in the water or in the molten state. They will not form ions at all. So, such electrolytes are called as what? Non-electrolyte. For example, if I take glucose is added to the water, it will not form any ions. So, there is no ionization takes place for these non-electrolytes alpha value is, will be equal to what zero here so this is very very important points you have to remember strong electrolyte 100 percent ionization that is uh, they are ionized completely weak electrolytes partial ionization non-electrolytes they will not ionize here okay this is important point you have to remember next one so the example for strong electrolyte weak electrolyte and non-electrolytes is already we know that strong electrolytes they will undergo complete ionization 100 percent ionization takes place strong acids strong base and salt all these are coming under strong electrolytes which undergo complete ionization strong acid hcl h2so4 hno3 hbr hi hio4 next strong base naoh koh rboh cesium hydroxide cesium csoh next salt nacl kcl k2so4 na2co3 all these are uh, coming under strong electrolyte which undergo complete ionization here next weak electrolytes weak acids and weak bases you have to remember these two weak acids are hf hcn cs3 cooh like that all the weak acids they are coming under weak electrolytes which undergo partial ionization here weak base nh4oh this is aniline and these are alkyl amines next non electrolyte they will not form any ions example ccl4 benzene cs2 carbon disulfide and ether whenever they are added to water they will not form any ions here so these are some important example for strong electrolyte weak electrolytes and non electrolytes here